Welcome to this week's episode of Content Creation Made Easy. I am your host, Jen Liddy, and I have a special guest with me today who is here to talk about something that I am not hearing a lot of people talk about right now, long form content. I'm bringing on expert Kelly Clark. Now, Kelly will tell you she's not an expert in blogging, but when you go to her blog, you're not going to believe me for saying that because her blogs are so good and they drive traffic to her all the time. And she and I are in a mastermind together and we've become friends. And so I asked her to come on the podcast and talk to you about long form content, specifically blogging. And it's really hard to kind of maybe wrap your head around this right now because everything is short, snackable TikToks and reels and YouTube shorts. But long form content is sticky and it has a long shelf life. So we're going to talk today and Kelly's going to share with us her inspirations for her blog, how she does it, her tactics, and some things that you need to be thinking about to create long form content. Before I get into questioning Kelly, I want to tell you that Kelly is an expert in healthy eating. She helps people find their happy weight without dieting, without restriction, without like disordered eating. And I'm telling you, I know how Kelly does her work personally. You can ask me how I know, uh, but, but she is the biggest cheerleader and she just comes at you with such enthusiasm and science. So I am so excited to have her on today because she's an expert in her own field. And she's like, kind of, she's kind of doing a crossover show today because she's talking about blogging. So Kelly, I hope I did an apt description of what you do as an expert, but I just want to say thank you for being here today. Well, as per usual, Jen, you could nail things better than anyone else. So. <laughs> As per usual, Jen, you nailed it way better than me. <laughs> Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. And I'm so excited to be here. I've had just such a privilege and honor to be in the same spaces as you this year with the Mastermind and also in your membership. So it's, I love just being in your orbit. So thanks for having <laughs> me here. <laughs> You're already getting some of the Kelly positive, enthusiastic vibes. So Kelly, break it down for us. How, give us a little bit of your bio, how you got into your current business with what you're doing. Perfect. Yeah. So I started, I had a really complicated with relationship with food growing up. I started collecting diet rules, tips and tricks when I gained a little weight one summer and basically trying to follow those, all the, you know, only eat the white of an egg and chew your food 15 times and don't eat after six o'clock. I mean, I think it would make anyone's eating disordered. And that just really took so much time from my life and I didn't really get the chance to figure out who I was without the disordered eating. So eventually I got healthy and I became a teacher and I love the kids and I started to grow more confident as I finally could live without the eating disorder. And um, I just got to this space. I started a kids program that was self-esteem building. And I thought, you know, I'm skirting around the issue. Why is self-esteem important to me to teach? And I thought I am ready to share my story. By then I really understood what happened. I realized there's no reason to have shame around eating disorders. So I just started, I wrote a book because I was like, you know, we make eating so complicated. And it was actually three simple things that got me healthy and that evolved into coaching. And then of course, blogging. So, <laughs> so <laughs> which yeah. is where we are today. So, but, tell, so you've already given us a little clue to what you do, but tell us more about your audience. Who do you help? Oh, great. Yeah. So I help um, just like my career, finding your ICA is such a winding road too. So now I can proudly say years later, you know, I help type A women unlock their happy weight without dieting. And I can even add nuances like so many of my clients have a mother or a relationship like in their life with the narcissist. Um, many are entrepreneurs, many purge, you know, so there's like all these little connect the dot things. But um, yeah, for the most part, I, um, these people, they know dieting works short term, anyone can raise their hand and say I did keto I did this I had these amazing results, but they're now at the point where they're so frustrated and they want something sustainable. So that's mm -hmm. where I come in and say, okay, I've got this way to, it's a happy weight method. It's it unlocks your happy weight without dieting. And, um, you know, some of my clients, they just calorie count, but it's on their mind all day. It's interrupting them parenting and being the wife they want to be, or do the art they want to produce in the world and so on. And, um, I know that feeling so closely and, um, it, uh, yeah, it's so raw for people and it's so disruptive of their life. So I just basically, um, with these people with all this effort and energy that they want to put towards getting healthy, unfortunately they have the wrong information. So I just give them a little bit of good information and they just absolutely fly. Like it's unbelievable. So it's just sort of like, you know, those little cars that hit a wall, you flip the car a little bit to the right, <laughs> goes, you know, so 
I, great, I just great. see the twist. Yeah. Yes, I love that. <laughs> but, so yeah. let's talk about then, you know, your niche, you know, your messaging, you know, who you're talking to. And one of the things that I always teach my clients is let's find a home base content platform for you that feels good, right? So if you are somebody who, um, you know, doesn't like writing, maybe blogging is not for you. But if you're somebody who knows that you're willing to put in the time and the effort and you've got everything else nailed down and your home-based content is blogging, this is going to be really helpful for you. But I also know that you have a lot of things to share that will be helpful for people no matter what they are, wh where their home-based content is. So I'm just curious, why did you choose blogging for your home-based content? Okay, great. Yeah. I mean, and I like to say, if you like talking, you like blogging <laughs> because really that's what SEO is. So I always say, you know, if you like talking, you like blogging because even SEO search engine optimization that likes that conversational tone as well. So I say that to, um, I don't work for any blog place. So I'm just pushing this because I love it. And I really have had results from it that are so exciting and i so for anybody yeah so the reason i pick blogging is because you're really building on your own real estate mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about the algorithm changing you don't have to you know a lot of people have wiped their instagram now and they just have the six or the nine blocks and they're not sure if it's the right thing to do or blah 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 all this stuff is fun and interesting but i just find with blogging and i i don't even need to really compare it to things i'm just saying like Blogging is a place to, um, you have your own real estate. It won't change over time. Um, content is king. If you're putting good content out, like I rank really high for a couple of things, like why does whole milk help you lose weight? It's because I did a lot of research. It was thorough. And so now when people Google it, it comes up first, depending on the combination of words you use. But it's uh, basically the idea that you know, catcher in the ride, people are still reading it today because it's good. So if you're putting good stuff out there, it will stay, it will come up and uh, people can learn from it and get to know you and all that kind of thing. I also think um, so many, whenever I start working with a new client, I say, oh, how did you find me? And it's just so interesting. A lot of them will say, oh, that interview you did with that doctor about structured eating, or they'll say, um, you know, the, the post about how do I stop being bulimic where you told your story. And so it's just really great to see like people that are sort of up at night, upset about what's going on in their life. They want to make a change. They're dedicated. It's not just like entertainment. They're actually sitting down, Googling, looking for results. And I love working with those people too, because they're really dedicated. Also, um, I love learning and it's such a chance to keep researching. Every time I write a blog post, I learn something new. It's something I can share with my clients when I'm working with them. Like yesterday, someone emailed me like about uh, iron and if it will if calcium blocks iron and if you should stop drinking calcium. So I've been spending hours like going to PubMed and reading all these different things. And I'm now educated on that piece to, um, you know, share a broad range from Harvard results to things in the 1940s, like looking at all of it. So it builds your know, like, and trust because you're infusing your own personality in it. And yeah, I just think it's a really great chance to share your knowledge, share your authority and also um, your personality. So I love blogging for that reason, because really there's no rules. This isn't a teacher saying you've got to have this, this, and this in your essay. You start build out your own look and feel and, and you get good at it and it's fun. <laughs> well, my next question was going to be, how does blogging fit in, in a bite-sized content world? But you literally just answered that question because you're, you're talking about, first of all, you're making yourself more of an expert every time you write a blog. And then you're also setting yourself up as more of an expert every time you write a blog it's got this kind of long tail in that it it's searchable years. Cause you've told me before that people will find blogs you've written years ago. Yeah. Like a lot of times people will say, Oh, I found you through, um, why does white bread help you lose weight? And I was like, Oh, I forgot. I wrote that blog post, you know, <laughs> so it's working for you. These things are like working for you in the background while you're sleeping on holiday, yeah. writing another blog post. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's still happening, but also too with, um, it can be bite-sized content to blogging. Like I tend to like get on a tangent and I'm excited. Let's do another picture of my dog <laughs> to uh, get a point across in sort of a creative way. But at the end of the day, you actually can just have 300 words, three paragraphs, put a lot of bullet points in, you know, just so it's really easy to read and it can be really powerful and bite-sized too. But on that note, you can also use like social media to amplify. So you can still use bite-sized content. And if you don't mind me sharing, I had an amazing VIP day with you, Jen, and you just showed me how to like 
break down content you've spent time on and reuse it so that you have you could kind of put it out in 15 different ways and make it bite size so the blog allows you to get all your ideas out and then you can pick and choose and make it bite size on your other platform so i love it i never thought of that before and i just love that you shared that and it's a way to draw more people in back to your blog back to home base back to your real estate back to your real estate i love that you um you get a lot of new clients from your blog in fact the other day you and i were talking and i said um Oh, maybe, you know, like you don't, maybe you go for a week or two without blogging and you were like, oh no, if I don't publish new content, it really affects people coming to me. So can you talk about how it creates a incoming churn for you? Yeah, it's so interesting because as soon as I put a blog post out, I literally, um, someone will buy my book or I'll get a one-to-one -one client um, discovery call will pop into my email. So it's Google loves fresh content. So it's just putting stuff out there. Even I've started doing some shorter posts about client stories and that's allowed me to, if um, I don't have the time to even do the newsletter to my group, which I should do to uh, re get that content out there. It's a way repurpose. It's a great way to just give your um, your blog a hit, a hit type thing. Like I always think, you know, if Justin Bieber stops touring, um, Sean Mendez, people are going to go see Sean Mendez on the same <laughs> stage the night he could have been there, right? So you want to keep putting that stuff out there. <laughs> oh, good, such good stuff I, like that. I personally would rather see Taylor Swift, but. <laughs> But I want to see some, I want to see some old guy. Like I just saw Paul McCartney two weeks ago. Oh, he amazing. just turned 80 and it was up there completely rocking it out. And then in April, I saw Billy Joel. So you want to see Taylor Swift and I want to see like, oh my some God. white guys. Actually, <laughs> no, I'm with you. Billy Joel is like, so you've got to see these people when you can too, right? Yes. <laughs> legends. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is such great information for people. I hope people are already starting to feel excited because we're going to dive in even deeper about um, what are a couple of takeaways or ahas that you learned over the years that have made you so successful. I mean, you, you told me that people are coming in from across the world to come from your blog, that they come in like, they, of course, because they're across the world, they're reading it at all times of the day. Um, you're not focused on the algorithm and is like this a high time for me to post on Instagram like this is on your real estate you're doing work you love to do it's bringing people in so tell us like what have you learned what are some takeaways we can learn yeah I think that organic reach is just so powerful because it's sort of like you're building this huge library that has the doors open 24 7 and the entire world can go, go in anytime they don't have to take a plane or anything to get there so I've had clients from and I say this because I want other people to get excited um Dubai Switzerland New Zealand Australia Hong Kong Singapore Canada the U.S. all over the U.S. um you know, so it's something it, and you can do too, then you're not relying on other people. That way you're putting it out there and people will come to you because something you've said has struck a chord type thing. So yeah, uh, some of the takeaways I've taken are that, you know, a lot of times uh, we want to just go into facts when we blog. But the first one I'd say is, you know, add with your facts, add a personal story. Like when I talked about whole milk, I didn't say whole milk is best and this is why and so on. I said, you know, for years I drank skim milk. I thought it was helping me lose weight weight it's lower in fat and you know then I go into but these are the reasons why you know and that way you're building that know like and trust you're sharing a personal story something that maybe strikes a chord with them so mm -hmm. that's a big piece um a second one is the whole um sort of um make yourself famous and that's the idea that people want to know who's talking to them I always say you know I blogged as my cat for years just his name was Scaramouche and I was like no one will find me this way but like you want people oh, to amazing. find you <laughs> And I just thought, okay, I've got to, they need to know who's talking to them and just sort of, it's like a friend having coffee with a friend. So not many people will have coffee with a cat. So <laughs> I just so thought wait, the, the cat's name was Scaramouche, like yeah. Scaramouche, Scaramouche. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, can we just do a little side detour here? Why? So you were blogging as your cat because you were not ready to be visible? Yeah, I think it was my start of, I thought I'd put it up and everyone would find it the first day and I was still finding oh, my gosh. legs kind of thing. And, you know, no, people won't find you for years. You know, actually someone from high school just got my, bought my book the other week and it was like the most lovely thing, you know, reconnecting with him and so on. But um, yeah, so I think, I, I think it was just, I didn't really get 
there's lots of like, I'm not really an expert in SEO or blogging, but I've had this tremendous success from just doing some very, very simple things, which is what I like to get across because this is doable for everybody. And yeah, like don't blog as your cat, <laughs> blog, <laughs> blog as yourself, like have fun with it, be proud of your work and start before you're ready. Um, put on something fun. And, you know, I go, I've started, it's evolved into costumes and all the rest, but you know, it started with just like, you know, sitting down with like a, a bag of milk or something like that. So, and asking a, a stranger in the shop to take a photo. So you can just <laughs> have fun with it. And people really want to know who, who they're having coffee with type thing. So mm -hmm. I think, and also too, like you can really have trouble with copyright with images. Um, on my kids program, we just had a picture of a bake sale and you get all these letters and we, we thought it was an image we could use and it turned out it wasn't. So no. take a picture of your own running shoes. You know, it, it, it like, it's a lot easier than going to and it's people can tell stock images and it, it makes it feel like maybe the writing is cut and pasted too mm -hmm. you know well, that's so interesting yeah so you're saying in your blog another important piece is including visuals and including pictures of yourself and pictures of your life not only like telling the stories in the content and the verbiage but also the visuals too Yes, definitely. And okay. I think images really break it up. Like you don't want these big blocks of text you want to have, and you can put, throw in something irrelevant or fun. Or if you just like, I I'll, I'll put in a picture of earrings. I'm obsessed with earrings. And I just like, I'll put in a picture of earrings and say where I got them, but it, it kind of ties in. So people love to see your pets or um, your trip or whatever is going on in your life, because it helps to show like in my case that you can't can walk away from an eating disorder and have a full life or, um, you know, in your case, like, I love your pictures. I'm always like, oh, it's Jen, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just where you are, what you're doing and the creative way that you'll bring walking by um, a beautiful painting and the way you pull it into content is really interesting. So thank you. Yeah. Um, I feel like, okay, so there was, that was your second one. Did, was there a third one or did I miss the third one? Yeah. So you want to, the first is fact and personal, like mix, add your take on it, just the way you would with a friend, you know, yeah. sitting. Um, the second one is images, like whether you do collages or photographs or photographs of yourself, do just take your own. And then the third one is being consistent. So again, it comes back to that whole, who are you going to go see at the concert, you know? So just putting stuff out regularly, as regularly as you can, and it can be a short one that week if you want to you know when you think of all the big names these people are always putting making putting themselves out there so totally yeah. so can we talk about um given all that you've learned and all that you've done over the years have you seen a mistake that you don't make anymore or a mistake that people make in the blogging space that you can steer us away from yeah and these are like again it's like you always teach Jen like what you think it, everybody knows is actually very simple things that can make a huge difference. So like for me, sometimes it's go back and cut that first paragraph. And I see, I know my partner, Alex, he wanted to fix a zipper and he went to watch a YouTube video and the guy talked about his fish tank for five minutes and, you know, like his ease in was so long. It took so long to get to the content. So just dive in a little sooner. It's also better for SEO because you want to have your keywords up early in your blog posts. So that's what matters. You, you don't want to pack it out at the end with your keyword you want to get your keywords up at the front multiple times so just diving in um another one would be i, I said earlier but that block of text like just yeah. add some air in there like do a bullet point sometimes i center things or bold things i think some people call them a speed bump it just helps people mm -hmm. slow down a bit read and connect and and not be overwhelmed if i see a big block i'm like on to the next thing kind of yeah not doing it not doing it <laughs> yeah Totally. And then um, a third one is just being conversational, something I said mm -hmm. too, but just making that just if you're going to write, just adding little words like, I mean, the other day, you know, it's just something you'd say to a friend and it, it makes it sort of fun and people do feel like you're speaking to them. I know like when I have discovery calls, people, they have that know, like, and trust from the conversational bit and they sort of will ask about how's your dog, how's Alex, because they know you through your storytelling and so on. But yeah. It's also, they'll say, oh, when I read your post, I can hear your voice in my head. It's because I don't write like a robot. I write like the way I'm talking now. You know, I find that um, inside the content creator studio, a, lo a lot of people struggle with what you just said, which is they grew up going to school and everything had to be a certain way. And you were rewarded for um, complex sentences and beautiful sentences and 
uh, everything was in a paragraph form. And, and so then maybe you went from like high school and college to university, like grad school or maybe a PhD. And then you got maybe a job in industry. And especially as teachers, like you didn't, there's no messing around. Like there's no like fooling around, like it's serious, right? You, you are showing up as a professional and there's, there's like uh, very specific ideas about what it means to be professional. So then you get into marketing and you're like, oh, none of that works in marketing. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. You almost have to write your own rule book. Like I have certain ways, like do, as long as you're consistent, you can do whatever you want. That's my rule. That's <laughs> so, so true. If you always start the first letter, lowercase after your bullets, just be consistent. And then it's your style. It's the way you do it, you know, and don't overthink it and just start your own rule book. <laughs> yeah. And there's yeah. no, um, there's no one coming at you with their red, with their red pen anymore. It's just, it's, it's for you. You kind of have to figure that out yourself. What's your style. So I'm really glad that you have pointed that out because we have that rule book that we've been carrying around for so many years. So it's kind of like what you do with eating is kind of like what, what I do with words. Like there's guidelines and we make it work for you, but there's no one strong, fast way that you have to do it hundred percent of the time. I love that. Yeah. That's so great. Yeah. Find out what works with, with you and be consistent. Then people yes. know it's like reliable. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. I mean, that's your whole platform is the consistency piece. And once you teach people their gold standard of eating, then they just, they get consistent and it's you, you're, you are also showing up with that in your blogging. And I just want to say like, you're just walking the walk, Kelly. Oh, that's so kind of you to say, cause I'm usually like publish and then I'm like, <laughs> I always want to like Instagram pushing publish because it's such a finish line and, and it's so rewarding because it's putting out something that uh, is personal and you really want to reach people that need to read about it. So, yeah, I think one of the things about blogging when you talk about it is your infectious enthusiasm for it. Can you tell us a little bit about your process? I know that there's a lot of research that you do and you enjoy the research. So can, but beyond that, like, tell us what kind of joy that goes into it and what, what kind of joy you get out of it. Yeah. Like I just find, uh, content is everywhere. I'm actually overwhelmed by like, I, I want to like stay up all night and keep writing. Cause it's so fun. Like the last week, one of my clients said, I was just like, okay, so what exercise are you going to do this week? And she's a law student in New Zealand. And she's just like, oh, I'm going to do the hot girl walk. <laughs> so I was like, tell me, qu'est-ce que c'est? <laughs> but um, it was just like so fun to hear her say, well, when you go on this walk, you can't have think about any boy drama. <laughs> you have to think about all the things you're grateful in your life. And, you know, it was just this beautiful list. It's so true. Like when you go for a walk, like where your um, attention goes, your energy flows. So the idea of going out on a walk and complaining about everything in your life, like I can sometimes end up doing, <laughs> you know, um, it just flip the switch and uh, think about those amazing things you have in your life. And, and then I thought this would make a great blog post. This would be so fun. And my, my dream of a hot girl walk is one of my dogs is in a wheelchair and we just adopted a little um, girl from Texas. And like, she's, uh, and I just thought, okay, I've, I've got a ton of friends who have all these dogs that are like blind or just adopted and that kind of thing. So I'm just going to do a whole, it's such a fun way to connect with people and put it out there. And just also people now, I think, will not be inspired to go on that hot girl walk mm -hmm. <laughs> and put that time in, think of those things they're grateful for but just doing it in a fun way by showing a little piece of yourself like um rocky 16 and this is something going on in our life right now and um that kind of thing so i think the joy comes from finding the things that make you you again this comes back to what you teach jen with content is like find putting your personal spin on it like everything's been taught a million times you're going to teach it your way through your vision so someone else's hot girl walk might be stilettos you know <laughs> it's definitely not mine but i like the idea of a hot girl walk. <laughs> Well, you're not thinking about anything else except like how confident you are. And that's, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, your, your joy for it is infectious. And when you were talking at the beginning of this piece about you love, you want to stay up late writing and like content is everywhere. I, I feel that way too about content. Like I see everything in terms of content. It's kind of like a almost like a, I don't want to say like a sickness, but it's definitely like a, I have a pair of glasses on and everything I see is like, that could be content. That could be content. And I know that there are people listening who struggle with that also, because they're like, everything is content. And I have a bajillion ideas. Those are like what I call the waterfall content creators. And then of course there are the empty well people who are like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to talk about. 
both of them have something to learn. Like the empty well people have to learn like how to kind of tease out the lesson or the story and how like their audience might be, but it's totally learnable. But for the waterfall people, their struggle is they feel bombarded by their ideas. So when you have like all these ideas swirling, can you just tell us a teensy bit about how you manage that information or those ideas or your time when you're coming to blogging? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it comes down to basically picking sort of a light outline before you start. So you know what your goal is. So, cause I, I know myself when I don't do that, it can just keep going and link to other things and everything's cross, you know, involved. Um, I'm swirling my hands around for audio, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So just reining it in a bit with mm -hmm. uh, beginning, middle end uh, and knowing where you're headed. And then I think it's also with that uh, content. Yeah, just, you, you know, the more you write the more blog posts you have to link back to to create that spider web on your site. So you can, like, if I mentioned milk now, I don't need to go into why whole milk is better than skim. I can just link right back to my, my blog post that's already ranking well. And if someone wants to investigate more, that's the invitation. If they don't want to, they don't have to. But really yeah, great. I think too, it's also about, you know, I'll do a really serious blog post about like milk. <laughs> I keep talking about milk, but that, <laughs> a serious blog post about bulimia or something like that. But then I'll, 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 I'll mix it with a lighter one, like the hot girl walk. So <laughs> it's not just light all the time, but you want to think about like, if you're, end goal is to help people. Who is that person you want to help? What are they thinking at night? What are they scratching their heads? So you can kind of get your list of blogs you want to write and then prioritize them. For example, I'll do a blog post about this interview because I think it is such a wonderful opportunity to be able to talk with you today and be part of your community. So that's a nice way to, you know, that's a kind of gives you some authority blog posts. Then you want to write an information blog post. Then you want to do the, the fun blog posts. So it's just keeping it sort of, you might want to have a list of break them up into to those categories and then just pick from different ones all the time. I mean, I, what about you? How do you do that with your... Well, I, the way that I do, I, I wish that I had an entire list of all the blogs I've ever written, because one of the things I'm terrible at is linking back to a previous blog I've written. So everything's just kind of hanging out there, like kind of like tinsel on a Christmas tree, you know, it's yeah. not integrated. And so you've got my brain going like, okay, how can I get my VA to kind of start interweaving these for me together. Um, but what the way that I operate is I work on a monthly theme usually. So, okay, this month we're talking about waterfall creators and then like four different pieces about being a waterfall creator. And then maybe next month I'll do something about being an empty well creator. And so that's how my brain works, but that's because I used to be a teacher and I think well, I was an English teacher, so I think thematically, but it's a way for me to chunk down. I use like an umbrella of a big idea and then I chunk it down after that. Um, but you've really got me inspired to think about how I can start to cross pollinate my blogs. And if I had a way of like, oh, maybe just like a, um, a spreadsheet that was searchable with titles and stuff like that, that would be really helpful for me. So I'm, I'm hoping that the people, if you are listening and you're like, this is good stuff. This is the kind of stuff that really can get you some traction in your business. And I, I want to just point out the stickiness, which I've said several times today, because I feel like people will spend a lot of time doing something like an Instagram story that literally disappears after 24 hours. And like, where is the return on your investment? And if you're getting people because of your Instagram stories, that's one thing. But like if you, if you could like use this amazing tool on your own real estate, how can that help you? I want people to start thinking about that. Yep, I love that. And I just want to go back for one second. I was going to say, you know, when you were saying about um, spider webbing your, you know, yeah. linking across pollinating, one thing I, I updated my website probably five years ago, but I started at the very beginning and I, my writing has completely changed. And it was just, um, I just spent about five minutes a post. I did one or two a day and I just like added a little bit. And then I was like, oh, I have written a post about fiber now. So I'll link back to it or whatever, or, um, you know, that kind of thing. So I just spent five minutes and don't underestimate, I'm a list maker too, but really it's all up here in our brains like yeah. so it just refreshes it to um link it across and then it also is so good for seo because you're breathing new life into those old posts so it um reminds you that kind of thing so just going back and just doing one a day yourself and just linking to things and you'll just be like oh there's now too many links i need to like step on the brakes because you'll it will be so successful like trust me i know for okay okay I'm, I'm inspired i'm feeling inspired and then your, sorry, what was your second question or your, the last thing you said, it was about, um, 
Oh, about Instagram spending an hour oh, yeah. on it. And I do that too. Like sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, this short Instagram post took an hour. And in reality, it's like this, sometimes they actually inspire you like, oh, this could be a blog post, but yeah, put that, take that content and put, just slap it on your blog post, add some H4s. So those, um, you want to add a, the keywords every few words, every th few sentences, just giving it a title. And that really helps with your SEO as well. And just repurpose that information, use it as a launch pad to write a blog post. And yeah, because as you said, it's gonna be there in five years, 10 years and so on, whereas that story is gonna come and go. So, and it takes time, right? All the editing and all the rest. So yeah, I would definitely give it a go. And um, yeah, I think too, for me, something that's really helped me is saying, you know, I can feel overwhelmed when I'm finished a post, like how will I write one like that again, or that kind of thing, or just like you put so much love into it, then you're like, okay, how am I going to write about, um, you know, whatever, uh, like a balanced dinner or whatever. And I think the idea is just, just give, give yourself that baby step, set an alarm for five minutes and say, I'm just doing five minutes today to get started. And you'll start building that blogging muscle. So don't be like, I'm crossing out the whole day to blog. Just give yourself five minutes. Amen. Yeah. And you'll be like blown away how quick it goes and how much fun you're having. And you'll probably do more, but just set you're an expert. Mm. remember you're an expert. You're an expert in whatever you're talking about. And uh, one of the things we, you and I have talked about is Kelly's, when you go look at Kelly's blogs, they're very meaty. They're very well done. They're very polished. And that can be like, you might compare yourself, but she, she's done the research. 300 words is a totally viable blog post and it's a great place to get started. And then you can add to it and you can add to it and you can add to it. So don't feel like you have to jump in with thousand words or 3000 words or even 600 words, like just start with something small and searchable that are going to serve your people. Yeah. Like when you, what's the max on Instagram, it's quite a lot of words, isn't it? It is, but I don't know what it is. It must be three or 400, mm -hmm. but like you could copy that, paste it and just make that like a blog post. So, and I think that, yeah, start small. I think it's always important to start small and you'll start to get your own look and feel. You'll start to get, know what kind of feels fun and it will just evolve. Like everything, everything in life, you don't, um, you know, I'm trying to think of it, another analogy in life, like Elon Musk didn't say I'm going to go to Mars, but you know, it was an evolution of him starting with, um, you know, car and different things like that and it building up. So start where you are. Yes. Um, Stop expecting everything of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And build slowly and have fun and you'll be surprised where it takes you. Agreed. Kelly, how can people get into your orbit? Um, oh, thanks so much for asking. And yeah, I think the best way is probably just coming to my website. It's the 10 principles.com. So 10 is one zero. Mm -hmm. So the 10 principles.com and at the, all over my site. And also at the end of every blog post, I just have a one day meal plan. And it's like a surprising amount of food that you can eat at every meal and still unlock your happy weight. So I love to share that piece with people as just a way for them to get a sense of, you know, I don't have to restrict. I don't have to skip meals. I don't have to go somewhere with my own Tupperware <laughs> of my own food, you know? So it's just like super normal stuff you can buy on the way home, even already prepped. So yeah, that would be awesome to okay, great. So the 10 so principles.com. I'll link to that in the notes. And then, um, at that website, they can find your blog, of course. Yeah. And then are you on Instagram? Yeah, I'm on Instagram, the 10 principles as well. So yeah, in Twitter, but I'm not on there very often, but the 10 principles is the best way to find me. But if you go, if you Google, um, Kelly Clark and happy weight, it will probably come up too. So, and one last thing I really suggest is to get the Yoast plugin. It's oh, just, yeah. I, but you use WordPress, it. right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. right. So there's other plugins for other things, but right. yeah. yeah, sorry. I'm just like, <laughs> oh, that's okay. But, but Kelly uses WordPress for her blog. So if you use WordPress, she highly recommends Yoast, but I actually did a search and there's other SEO plugins for other websites. So you have found that to be incredibly helpful with your SEO, right? Yeah. It helps me structure my writing and everything is like, my background isn't writing. So don't, you don't need to be a writer to be a blogger. So amen. 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 Kelly, thank you so much for everything today. Your information, your enthusiasm, your encouragement. I really hope people go check you out. Um, not only for your blogs, but also for the information that you share, because I know that you're anti-dieting and anti-restriction, and you really want to help women get to a happy place with their relationship with food. And I know that you've personally helped me a lot. So I just want to say thanks on all the fronts. 
Oh, well, thanks, Jen. And I've just had so much fun. I was in your membership last week and I was like, wow, this is a dynamic group of women who are, you know, architect, like just such a broad range of skills. And it was just so many, everyone's popping and excited and it was such a fun community to be in. So I it really appreciate this chance to, to speak with you today. So thank you so well, much. Actually, I'm going to say, if you want access to guest experts, because Kelly went way deeper in that, in our group, she is a guest expert and that training is in there. And so if you're looking for that kind of really deep engagement, that deep learning, that's where we're doing it over at the studio. So I appreciate you being on the podcast and I appreciate all that you shared inside the membership site. So thanks, Kelly. It's the Mutual Admiration Club today. <laughs> <laughs> but go check out Kelly at the 10principles.com. Thanks, thanks Bye. See you guys next week.